You're listening to the Fit Mind, Fit Body podcast, where we explore the connection between running and positive mental health. We do this by talking to runners from all walks of life who generously share their experiences with us. So you don't miss an episode, I've created an email list for you to join. Check the show notes for more details. Without further ado, I'm your host, Michelle Frost. Let's get moving. Welcome to this episode of the Fit Mind Fit Body Podcast, where Gareth Hines comes on and tells us all about how he started running. He was motivated to start running after watching a documentary eight to 10 years ago. And now, in just a few short weeks, he's going to be heading off to UTMB in France and running 160 kilometers in the mountains of Chamonix. So that is very exciting and what a big challenge he's up for. Can't wait to hear how it goes. We also talk a bit about his love of meditation and mindfulness and how that works together with his running. So I hope you enjoy this really fascinating conversation. Today on Fit Mind Fit Body, I am excited to introduce you all to Gareth Hines. Hello, Gareth. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm really good. And welcome to the podcast. Um, I have noticed on Facebook, I've seen you actually over the years, because I think we've got lots of mutual friends, not just people that I've spoken to on the podcast, but other people in the running community in Tassie, because it's quite a small space, really, but there's a lot of us. Um, but I don't know if I've met you in person. We've probably been at the same events, but I'm not sure that I've met you in person. So that's really cool that I can meet you like this. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the invite. It's always nice to have a a chat about something that uh, I know that a lot of us are passionate about, but yeah, no, I'm really excited to have a chat. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I know you live in Hobart now, but did you grow up in Hobart? Where'd you grow up? Yeah, I grew up in Hobart. Uh, I grew up uh, probably about 15 minutes or so out of the city, down around the, the beaches, down um, not too far from the airport. airport. Uh, okay. So down around the sort of the Acton area. It's, I guess you could say, nearly a semi-rural area. Grew up on a little bit of land, uh, but very close to the beaches. Uh, so, that yeah, that's where I grew up. And do you have lots of brothers and sisters? or is, how is that? I, I've got uh, one sister, two brothers, and I'm, I'm the oldest. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that sort of translates. You know, how if you're the middle yeah. child, you're this, and you're um, maybe if I'm the owner child, I'm either bossy. I'm, I'm not really sure, but uh, no, they're a good. Um, yeah, really lucky and, and fortunate to have such great siblings. Awesome. I'm the oldest as well, so I don't know either. I just know that. that well, you don't know anything else, do you? <laughs> like, no, that's I'm right. Yeah, that's all we do know, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think we. I think if anything, we were the ones that were treated maybe a little bit tougher. I think though, because it was your parents probably your parents' first rodeo, yeah. so um, yeah. that's something probably my siblings might disagree with. But um, let's let's go with that, considering that we're both aligned in this. On this, that's front. right. We can agree. <laughs> yeah, we can absolutely. <laughs> um, was it a very sporty family? Did you get out and about? You said you're a bit rural. Not necessarily. Um, our dad. My dad, mum wasn't necessarily too sporty. She probably did bits and pieces. She, mum's more on the cre- um, very creative, I guess. She's an art teacher, or she was. Um, dad definitely grew up playing the usual things, the Australian things like football, yeah. uh, quite heavily into football, uh, as was his brother and my uncle. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they. by the time I came around, dad's main thing was playing golf. Yeah. Uh, but he's always... <laughs> Family life wasn't necessarily sporting. It was probably more around the outdoors and the, and the family camping trips okay. uh, to go on through the year. Yeah, well, that's interesting. My mum's an art therapist and my dad loves golf. So there you go. Oh, really? <laughs> so oh, wow, there's, there's more similarities there. <laughs> oh, my gosh, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember what you thought about sport when you are at school when it came to things like running, for example? Is oh, I've always been... Yeah, I, I didn't, in, to be honest, I did not like long distance running at all. Mm-hmm. So I used to be all about the short distance stuff, sprinting. I was actually okay at that as a kid. Um, so yeah. in my in primary school, I was, you know, pretty good. I was always in the top couple uh, when it came to um, all of those kind of running things. And <clears throat> I've always been someone that 
picks up things relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, not trying to, I'm certainly not trying to blow my own trumpet because I'm certainly, there's certainly a lot of things that I'm certainly not good at. Um, but when it comes to sports, like when I started playing golf or, or, or any of those kind of things, I naturally, I guess, pick those things up quite quickly. And I played a lot of soccer through school, mm -hmm. uh, did a little bit of other bits and pieces, but but yeah, as far as that goes, and then later actually uh, through my teen years, I actually played a bit of uh, table tennis. One of the mates introduced oh. me to that. So I sort of played a little bit of that. Um, if you, you know, so that's sort of, I guess, my sort of child childhood as far as sort of the sporting stuff through school so what did you do school-wise academically uh that? i well school was um i just did the usual stuff once i did leave school i actually went into um so my background is actually in hospitality and tourism management so yeah. um until probably about until covid uh, for the previous sort of 20 years i was oh. actually sort of managing um or before COVID, I was managing sort of luxury hotels. So it's sort of um, now I'm actually, I pivoted through COVID. I wanted to challenge myself to potentially change direction and try something different. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, life's a journey and and I, I was really content and happy with what I had achieved in my career through hospitality and tourism. And I got to the stage uh, even before COVID where I was like, you know, maybe in the next five years, mm -hmm. I'd like to try something different. Uh, COVID sort of forced my hand. And, and once COVID came about, uh, the businesses that I was running at the time, uh, as for a lot of people in those industries and a lot of other industries, uh, basically we had to sort of shut the businesses and I had to tell all of, the, all of my workers um, that pretty much we're shutting the doors, you've got no work um, this is before the job keeper was announced, uh, and it was a really tough moment, um, and something, something that will certainly stick with me for a long, long time. Because job keeper then came out, and I think over a third of the staff that were working for me at the time, uh, they weren't eligible for job keeper, mm. and so that next six months, not only was I dealing with you know the, the absolute turmoil of, I guess, nearly society in a lot of ways. Uh, but I also found that I, you know, I had to, I wouldn't say counsel, but a lot of people were coming to me, you know, my workers, mm -hmm. you know, in that kind of sense. And it was a pretty confronting place to be in because I felt so powerless mm -hmm. uh, in, in not being able to help. So anyway, long story short, uh, in amongst shutting down businesses and everything else, over that next six to nine months, you know, I thought about my future. And then I've actually, yeah, now I'm now I work for the government. So I've sort of wow. changed. I wanted to, contribution is something we'll probably talk about later, but I think contribution is something that's that's very important to me mm -hmm. as a person. And uh, so I, I actually went to WorkSafe Tasmania for a little while and I've sort yeah. of moved internally a little bit, but I still sort of work in, in a place where I feel like I can make a difference uh, to people. So that's something that's, that's sort of really important wow. um, to me. So yeah, contributions certainly up there. So yeah, sorry, that sort of went off on a couple of little. No, that's really interesting. There. So, so what are you doing? Um, what are you doing for the government? Oh, so now? I work, so you went for uh, I work for, I work for consumer building. So we, uh, I guess I work for the regulator that, that regulates uh, building work across the state. Yeah. And so we look into all of the compliance issues when it comes to the building industry in Tasmania. Uh, and that inc includes all of the licensing components and then all the dispute resolution things. So um, it's, it's very rewarding work, but you certainly, um, it's quite challenging because you're dealing with consumers that are going through something like most people's residence or principal place is probably the biggest asset they've got. And yeah. there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong through the construction uh, or you've bought a house and then you find out it's completely defective. Um, so there's a lot of different things. And then there's also the dispute yeah. side, yeah, huge amounts of stress. So the people that I deal with on a daily basis are usually, you know, pretty heightened and pretty anxious about uh, what's going on because it's, it's associated with the biggest asset that they probably currently have and, and maybe – you know, it might be the biggest asset I'll ever have. So, mm. uh, but it's at the same stage, uh, it's it is rewarding work, and and like I said, that's something that that sort of drives me. It's something that, <clears throat> although you have better days, and some days, you know, and then obviously better days than others, 
there's certainly something that's quite, I guess, yeah, rewarding about being able to assist people through these kind of hardships and things. Yeah. Oh, it's fascinating. Um, did you, you were, you said you were working in tourism with hotels and things like that. You did all of that in Hobart? Was that all the Hobart? Yeah, pretty Hobart? much did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I nearly moved away a couple of times and then some career opportunities. So <clears throat> Hobart, let's say uh, Hobart maybe late 90s was, yeah, for lack of a better term, it was sort of, well, well, Tasmania in general, I think back in the 90s, potentially, uh, oh, well, look, there was certainly a perception of what Tasmania was. And I think that's obviously changed, you know, dramatically over the last sort of couple of decades um, for a lot of reasons. But then there, you could just see in the industry I was working in that there were going to be opportunities coming. And so I was very tempted to move away to explore career opportunities. But then I was fortunate enough, especially with the opening of the Henry Jones Art Hotel mm -hmm. in what was that, 2004, mm -hmm. uh, I was sort of fortunate enough to be on the, I guess, the... <clears throat> Uh, there for the opening of that yeah. and so that was a really exciting time and I think as we if we look back from 2004 to where the tourism and hospitality industries are now in Tasmania uh, especially in Hobart hospitality if you go back in time it's around the time where Henry Jones opened up that there was just a it was pretty much I think a turning point for the Hobart hospitality there was no there was no luxury hotels really. And then you had other small properties like Islington and then subsequent to that, you know, down the line further, you've had luxury resorts like Sapphire, you've had Mac One, mm -hmm. uh, and then you've had the, the booming whiskey, whiskey industries. Uh, you've had so many other things. You've had obviously Mona in that time yeah, as gin well. and ciders and all sorts of gin, other stuff. Gin, cider, um, beers, everything else. And then obviously what we'd probably here to talk about in a sense as well mm -hmm people really started to take note of what we have down here, which is, you know, you know, the wilderness mm -hmm. and those kind of experiences that you can come and do down here in Tasmania um, is something like, yeah, there's some beautiful places around that, the country that we live in that we're so fortunate to live in, but not just because I live down here in Tasmania, but there are parts of Tasmania that I just think nowhere else in the country can, you know, yes, sometimes they might be remote, <laughs> <clears throat> but I think it's very hard to beat certain parts of Tasmania. Yeah, it's amazing. My, um, I mean, a, a plug for my siblings. Two of my siblings and their partners have just opened up the, um, the four. It used to be called the Forum. Now it's called Easy Tiger. It in St Helens, which is a yep. cinema in St Helens. Um, and they they've got a micro brewer going in there as well, and some. Uh, food venues and things, but in part it's because of the mountain biking side. So that's absolutely sort of the very small connection to what you were saying with experience yeah. and and um, tourism in Tasmania <clears> as well. <throat> I also worked for the tourism department briefly with them um, online in the online digital space a number of yep. years ago too. So um, just after the time that you were, were saying, so I can definitely attest to that change in yeah. that Tasmanian landscape. Um, and how exciting is it for places such as? Uh, there's Derby, Maydina, like the West Coast with Mount Owen, you know, mountain Amazing. biking, there's tracks around Zion now, there's, you know, you've got, oh, I think there's more trails up around Penguin, the, you know, mountain it's biking incredible. alone is, and, and obviously St Helens as well. Yeah. So, we, um, it's a really exciting time. This state, uh, federal government gave us funding to provide lots of workshops for digital literacy for local businesses when uh, when the um the internet. What's the, what's that called? When they rolled out, um, oh, NBN or NBN, <laughs> yeah, that thing. I should oh, yeah, know, okay. but it was so long ago. As I said, it's in the afternoon. I'm terrible with what I'm saying with words. Um, anyway, we rolled up these workshops and we did some in Derby in 2013. I think it was 12, 13, and it was dead. Derby was really yeah. like we we did get sort of. You know, maybe maybe ten businesses came along, but they were all suffering because you know, blah blah blah. So we were there to teach them how to use the internet because it was coming to their town, um, the NBN. And then we went away. Or we went overseas for eight months, and when we came back, the mountain bikes had hit Derby by by two, end of two thousand and fifteen, two thousand and sixteen, and we were like, 
well, this is not the same town that we were here. <laughs> it was just yeah. amazing, that change. Like you wouldn't, if you hadn't seen it with your own eyes and in such a quick time, how things can change. Yeah, tourism. yeah, it's uh, it's, it's quite amazing, and, and I think even this year they've what had the the two um, the two world tour whether I'm world tour enduro events, yep. one at Derby, <clears throat> one at Derby, and one at Medina, and then that was alongside the Kinani Mountain Run. So I mean, over the over the course of that two or three weeks, to have those kind of sort of events down Caliber. here in Hobart and Tasmania on the calendar is just it's just so exciting for mm. that sort of what do you say it's adventure tourism mm. or, or or sporting events that are certainly attracting people uh, from not only a local but a national and then also international communities, which mm. is really really exciting. Yeah, I love it. All right. Um, how did you start running? So we've we've got a bit of your work background and where you grew up. And oh, yeah, so I didn't like running at school. Uh, so <laughs> I started running as a, just for a little bit of fitness. So my uh, once I left school, because I did work in hospitality and tourism, my hours were a little bit all over the show. And the other thing that I developed um, from pretty young age was a love for the water, and that was through Dad. Uh, when I went on those camping trips, I think I might have touched on earlier as a kid, I was exposed to um, exposed to the water. So Dad was a very keen diver. Uh, he would, you know, dive for craze, abalone, and we would go out in the boat as a kid. So I got exposed to fishing and being out in the boat in some unbelievably amazing and beautiful places uh, whilst going camping as a, as a family when we were younger. Uh, so my love... Um, initially when I was growing up in my teen years was actually surfing and that translated because of my, it was something I couldn't commit to team sports or anything else anymore. Yeah. And so I naturally gravitated towards something that I you know, started doing as sort of, I guess, just prior to being a teenager, started yeah. surfing. And so for my teens, twenties and thirties, and I still love it now, but I just don't do it as much as running now. Uh, that was the thing. And where trail running sort of fits into that as well is that you, you can do trail. You can trail run when you can as well. So if you do have, yeah. if you are a shift worker, um, then it sort of can fit within your in, in your within your schedule, depending on what your work hours are. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't really until my sort of late twenties, I would say, that um, my partner at the time, she was pretty active, and she ran for just fitness. Um, I used to get a lot of my fitness mainly from wanting to surf every waking moment whenever I could. Uh, so I'd be, I was someone that would drop everything to go surfing if the waves were good. Yeah. But then slowly but surely she sort of rubbed off on me and then we started doing the odd little run around um, where we were sort of living at the time, which actually did have some trails and beach and other things yeah. pretty close by. But um, I'd never ran more than 10 Ks until probably about maybe – I don't know, about eight to 10 years ago when yeah. I sort of started um, thinking about uh, running. And the reason I got into ultra running is I was in my 30s, early 30s, and I was like, wow, you're nearly halfway to 70. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I want to do something this year that I never thought I'd do as the back then, the surfer yeah. that only ran occasionally mm -hmm. up to a maximum of 10Ks. And I needed a new pair of running shoes. So I was actually looking on YouTube at some shoe reviews from guys like the Ginger Runner and a few of the other YouTubers that were around sort of just reviewing shoes. Mm -hmm. And then it was underneath one of the videos in, the, in one of the shoe review videos that there was a recommended documentary on someone that ran an ultra marathon. So after I'd watched the shoe review, I clicked on that. And in amongst my search for, to do something that I never thought I'd do, I watched that documentary and I thought, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run an ultra marathon. So that was a, that was a road marathon. The documentary, or, or, was, it, or was it? No, on that a, was for um, a trail. That was for a, that was for a trail. So awesome. The road running side didn't really appeal to me, so I thought, yeah. oh well, let's let's start the ball rolling and let's find something to enter and have a go. So and that was and about ten years ago. <clears throat> about oh maybe it's about eight. I, I forget yeah. now. I'm getting yeah. I'm getting older. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. terrible. <laughs> so yeah, I was, let's say I was around around a decade ago, give or take a couple of years. Whatever, doesn't really matter. So, what did you do with that 
sudden inspiration because I know like three decades ago I watched a Hawaiian Ironman and thought I really want to do that and I've hadn't really stopped running since didn't do an Ironman but um, it was like yeah. what well, off I went um it was quite inspiring yeah, that, so um, what, how did what did you do it sort of exposed me to initially I did um I I did that sort of training block before the event and so I did the UT, I did UTA mm-hmm. uh and just to, you know, I did that training mainly solo and once I think I got up over that sort of 15K mark in the training runs, I was like, oh, okay. Initially it sort of is hard, but then I guess eventually it probably becomes, I guess, your new normal, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then after the event, obviously I was exposed to more of the community side of trail running mm-hmm. and it – yeah, I was actually just really, really inspired going to an event like that and it sort of started the ball rolling and I thought, well, okay, I've done one uh, and I did a 50 to start with Yeah. and then there was, I just knew knowing myself that I wouldn't stop until I've at least done 100. Initially, though, after I'd done that one, I thought, oh, well, let's just see see how we go. I didn't put any pressure on myself, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> I'd certainly formed the habit and I suppose that's probably the most important thing. Um, it had become over that previous five to six months, mm. it had certainly become something that I I got to really love. Mm. And that was where I guess the bug started. And I guess here we are eight years on and I, I'm running a lot more than what I used to sort of eight years ago. So you, did you start to identify yourself as a runner at that point, do you think? Or was it prior? To oh, it's, it's been an interesting relationship because initially the initially all of my my long-term friends who aren't runners uh, that are surfers, they actually were, they weren't very complimentary when it came to my running because what it was started to do, I would say in my friend circle back then when we were surfing, I was one of probably the instigators of going, right, the surf's going to be good on this day. Mm-hmm. We're going here. We're going up the East Coast. We're going down South, whatever. Yeah. We're going to Bruny Island. We're, and then... <clears throat> It sort of took me away from being that instigator that kept that peer pressure mm-hmm. running. And so eventually they didn't like um they didn't they didn't really love the fact that I was stopping surfing for running. And they yeah, so I've, I've certainly I've certainly copped a bit of um a bit of banter from the boys, which I'm more than happy to take because I sometimes dish it out a little bit um, uh-huh. uh, as well. So I guess if you're going to dish it out, you've got to be able to take it. And there was one race that I did in particular, I forget when it was, and this is probably a cup, maybe two to three years in. <clears throat> and then they said to me, they said, oh, oh, so you've got this running thing coming up, like this ultra marathon. I said, yeah, it's, when is it? Oh, it's in, oh, I can't remember. Let's say it's just February. Yeah. So they said, oh, after you've got back, we want to have dinner with you. And the only thing you've got to do is bring your running gear with you. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, because we want you to come and have dinner with you and then we're going to burn your running gear because you're going to start surfing again type of thing. So, um, yeah, that's that's initially what happened when it came to me and I started to run ultramarathons, just a little bit of resistance from the boys. So. Oh. <laughs> but obviously you were time, resilient. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And look, you know, yes, that's probably the banter. I know that they are um, – they certainly are really supportive as well, though. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? You haven't, like, turned any more of your surfing dudes into also being running dudes as well? No. there's oh, One of them does a little bit, but he, yeah. he's pretty prone to getting injured. And okay. I think he's I think he's one of these guys, he's, he's, he's pretty successful in, in professional life. And I think what he does is he'll be injured, and then as soon as he gets – gets sort of somewhat back, then he'll go out and he'll bust out a really quick 10K. And as opposed to easing himself back in, I think he's just either one of those all or nothing kind of people. So it certainly makes it pretty challenging um, for him to get back. But uh, there's certain, some of the other guys don't know, they're not going to be runners, I don't imagine. But but what I think is nice is that combines with, I guess, the fact that all of my old mates are now really appreciative and, you know, certainly you know give me a fair bit of love when it comes to the stuff that I do do in the running okay. um what what's the most exciting thing is that as a result of running now for this sort of eight years is the actual new friendships that I've formed which I, I guess is probably a huge thing um that sort of keeps people attracted to the sport of trail yeah. running 
Yeah. And, and I guess that's the community. I feel like asking, have you taken any of your runners surfing? Oh, no, but I've had, I actually have had a couple of requests, but no, okay. I, yeah, no, that's something I haven't actually done. That, You'll maybe have to that do could that be a crossover. Yeah. There you go. I, I'm sure yeah, like, I, most physical endeavors have some kind of crossover with running in that it's a good way to stay fit for them, even if there's no yeah. running involved in the actual, you know. Yeah, they do. Hmm. So, Absolutely. I love that. <laughs> um, all right. So, we, you do identify yourself, or do you not? Do do you think you're a runner now? Is oh that, yes, yeah, yeah, abs- so yeah. I'd say definitely. Yeah, mm. yep. So when do you ever get injured at all? I've I've been touch wood. I've been pretty lucky. Um, I've certainly had got a little bit of a calf strain. I think it was earlier this year um, after the Cradle Mountain Run this year. Mm-hmm. Got a little bit of a calf strain, uh, and it didn't happen during the run. It actually happened two days later when I actually went to just do a quick little recovery jog okay. um yeah on the monday and i literally i warmed up i was you know i thought i'll just go out and just i've got a little thing that i usually do as an active recovery mm-hmm. pretty close to home and just literally within three or four steps i was like oh hang on that doesn't feel like just muscle tightness so um had to sort of nurse that for a few weeks yeah. um but primarily been pretty lucky when it comes to injuries which is um good. which is good i'm not sure why but um let's hope it continues <laughs> how do you think you'll deal with it emotionally if you say can't run for six weeks or something like that oh i'd be i'd be okay um at the moment i wouldn't be okay though because i I, i'm actually training for utmb at the moment so i've got about eight weeks to go so there's as long as it doesn't happen in the next 10 weeks then i'm fine so do you find um this is i can remember when i first was training for marathons and you get closer to the date, and even just stepping off a footpath, you're very careful <laughs> with everything oh, that yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, oh, and it, and it's more about you know, same when you're training. Like you know, some of the guys I run with sometimes, you know, they they fly down the hills, and then I'm like, well, no, 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 let's um, I just conserve just to be you know mindful of the fact I don't want to be you know not out there to try and be a hero on my training run. Just uh, all about sort of uh just preserving the body as such. Not to say that I don't like to sometimes put the foot down, but mm-hmm. it just depends on your training block and what you're sort of aspiring to do in, in, the, in that sort of near future that you just got to be probably a little bit mindful of. So what motivates you to keep running? I think it's uh, it's become my new normal, I guess, and it's uh, I suppose we all know um, I, I like the journey. I, I really like embracing the journey. Mm-hmm. A lot. Some people don't like the training component, but I think for me, yeah, the races are amazing, and they're. But to me, they're sort of the, they're sort of the cherry on top, and they're a celebration of all of the work for me that you've put in. And is it the crossing you know, the line I want to make, or, the, or the race? <clears throat> sorry, to interrupt. Oh, the oh, sorry, the the race itself. I think the race itself, and I suppose whatever happens, if you, you know, oh, let's say you're finishing a race, that that's definitely the cherry on top. Um, but I'm conscious of making sure that in embracing the journey that I'm trying to celebrate along the way, you know, I'm, you know, when we, when we've got the landscapes we have down here in Hobart, some of the stuff I get to see week in, week out while I'm training, you know, is, is something that I don't want to lose sight of. It does, it's not a chore to me to get out there in the mountains, uh, and run like I did a long run yesterday. Um, you know, it took me a little bit longer than what I would have liked, but, you know, you know, I still saw just saw some amazing stuff. Some of the ridge lines we get to run across, you know, the panoramic views of the city, you know, you know, traversing down some beautiful trails. You know, it's something that I, you know, I always appreciate. So I don't want to just look at the races and go, this, I want to embrace the journey along the way as well to make sure that I'm um being appreciative. You know, we're here for such a short time. Mm-hmm. And I just want to embrace every day. Um, but I do try and be consistent. I think the people that I look up to and the people that inspire me, um, you know, and I've got a lot of those people around me through the, in this community, um, some that I probably should give a little bit more love to, but I'll, I'll maybe I'll touch on later on, depending on where the conversation goes, as to some of the people that you've, you've actually even had on your podcast as well yeah. that are certainly very inspiring. But I really do... There, there's a lot of uncertainty in a lot of things we do. And I think trail running has sort of given me a bit more of a certainty. You know, it's something that I can control. Um, mm-hmm. And it is, it's such a good outlet 
as I'm sure most people that do this uh, mm-hmm. would agree, you know, it is quite meditative in, you know, in in what it is. And I just love getting out into nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I love, you know, and especially whilst I really enjoy running by myself, you know, being out there in nature with others is something that's just a really, really special thing. And similar to, get, or, you know, my younger years, surfing with good friends, I think being out in the wilderness, um, whether it is in the water or in the trails, in the mountains, um, with other like-minded people is just, um, yeah, some of the most fond memories um, over the last sort of eight years. And that's something that I, when I look back on that sliding door moment of me watching that YouTube review and then yeah. deciding to enter a race, it's one of those moments that I know I'll look back on when maybe my body isn't as capable as it is now. I know it's something that I'll look back on, you know, with <clears throat> as one of those moments where I'm just so glad that, you know, I decided to just do something a little bit different. So how do you fit it in? Like it's one thing to train for a five or a 10 K as it's a lot of people start in those zones. Um, how do you fit in when you're training for a hundred K or more? How do you fit uh, in and cold down a job and every other thing that people do in their daily life? Yeah, it's, it's tough. Um, there's certainly a balancing act. I try and branch off on from others. So there's a few group runs down here. And so I'll try and intertwine. I usually might have Mondays off. Mm -hmm. Tuesdays, there is a small group which I've reconnected with uh, and I've been going going to probably on and off called Kinani Dirtbaggers. Mm -hmm. And so that's I think that started back, a few of the older guys in the trail running community, they started that back in the 90s and it's sort of been on and off since then. And they meet every Tuesday uh, at about 5.45, and you go go on probably somewhere between an eight and a ten, and it's literally just to pick pick your own adventure, and that starts from South Hobart every okay. Tuesday night, and so that's sort of a bit of peer pressure to get me out there um, connecting with others. Uh, Wednesday night we have social run with Hobart trail runners, mm-hmm. so that's been going now for gee oh, around three and a half years. So that's pretty much just religious every Wednesday night, and and what I'll do is if I'm training because we've got the social run that starts at six, I'll usually get there early to actually do maybe an hour or so prior to the social run. And then I do the social run as well. Yeah. And then Thursday nights, there's another group run if I want that I can go to as well um, called knockoffs. And once again, similar, very sort of social vibe uh, there, Um, or I'll make that my sort of midweek long run. And then just recently over the last couple of months, um, couple of the guys, one of the, the the guys I run with, he's working closer to where I work. So on a Friday night after work, we've been meeting recently to just go for a, a bit of a weekly wind down job on a Friday night. And then obviously I'll try and squeeze in my long runs on, over the weekend as well. So it certainly takes some dedication, but I think it's about, I think might have touched on it before. It's, it's sort of become my normal. So I've, yeah, there are certain days that it's harder to get out. Mm. But I really just, like I say, just embrace the journey. Um, but I'm certainly not someone that looks at spreadsheets or tries to watch my watch every yeah. bit. I try and be pretty organic when it comes to training as well because yeah. I don't want it to feel like a job. I've already got a job. You know, this is something, this is a passion and this is, I don't want it to become too work-like, if that makes sense. It does. Do you run much? It mostly sounds in the afternoon because you're meeting those groups yeah. of people and things Mostly after yeah. any sort of thing. Yeah, I'm more an afternoon runner. Sometimes on yeah. the weekends I'll run early if I've got to do long runs. I'll certainly, mm-hmm. But on the week, oh, I'm certainly not someone that gets up at 5 a.m. to go and run. So I'd mm-hmm. certainly – I actually don't mind doing it at the end of the day. That's yeah, it's, it's something. Because... It's, it's something to, you know, yes, sometimes it's tough uh, when you get home and the weather then turns a bit and then you've got to go out and run for 90 minutes, two hours, or whatever it yeah. might be. Um, but it, I, I guess it's all part and parcel of it, really. It's, um, yeah, it's, yeah, there was, there was one, I think there was one day last week, I think there was a bit of a tough one that uh, I forget which one it was now, but I remember getting Where home going, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, my goodness, I've got to go out, and, and it, it was not nice. It was, um, but they're the days, <clears throat> they're the days when, you know, you're probably even more proud when you get back home yeah. and you can have a beer or yeah. 
you know, pick your poison or a smoothie or whatever you might have, you know, chocolate milk, whatever floats your boat after a run. I think they're the days where you go, you know, you know, you feel, you never feel bad after a run. That's for I sure. deserve it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Just a ticking it off. So what do you think, what motivates you in that if, um, do you need to have a run to be training for, like a race coming up or even if you didn't have a race coming up or have you always had a race that you've got, you know, whether it's months down the track or whatever that you're focused on in order to help motivate you get out the door or do you think, and I think this changes over our life as well. It's not like whatever you do now is is how it will be in the future or even how it was in the past, but how do you feel like it is now for you at the moment? I like to have a base, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I need to have a race coming up. I think it's mm-hmm. it's something that's very it's very ingrained in me to want to go running now mm-hmm. and want to explore. And so, but what I always want to maintain, especially whilst my body is able, is that some of the guys that we that I run with, for more the wilderness adventure side of side of things, um, outside of training is usually. Uh, there's a few guys that and and girls that will get together and we'll, we'll go and do some of the more remote stuff. And so I always want to make sure that I've got a base fitness so that I'm mm-hmm. can can get on board with that. But motivations, yeah. Sometimes, of course, if you've got a race coming up, as I do now with UTMB, you know that's that's obviously a huge motivation because obviously I've you know got to travel internationally to go and do this race. So um, there's a lot of energy that uh, that is going into that at the moment, especially yeah. because it's probably about eight weeks out now. Yeah. And, you know, the body's feeling good. But after that, I'm actually nearly, oh, never, who knows what will happen afterwards, but I think I'm actually going to make sure that I have a little bit of downtime after that, not to say that I won't still yeah. run, but I think as far as the pressure to go and train for something, I might just have a little bit of downtime after that. So I think it's important. I mean, but mind you, some people, they can just, you know, and and once again, you know, some people, they can just race and race and race and race. But yeah. And and I certainly, you know, uh, applaud people that can do that, those kind of things. But for me, might only be two, three times a year if if we're talking about maybe hundred K races. So last year I did Kosciuszko in December, I did Cradle Mountain Run in January, February. February. Yeah, in February. And then I haven't raced. Oh, no. And then I did Narantapu, uh, which is a 50K up the north about a month and a bit ago. I think that was in May. So probably a month and a half ago. And that was sort of just at the now end I of my sort of. Mm. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. I was at the, uh, I was the um, 25K turnaround. So you, you saw me plenty of times, twice, actually. Oh, did you? Oh, so I was okay. there giving you food and drink. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> my husband and no. I and my boys were there. We did that um, station. Oh, did you do that? Oh, well, thank you. It's, um, it's a pleasure. There you go. We have been at a race together. <laughs> yeah. It was, um, <laughs> I was a volunteer. No, and I hadn't. I, I'd never ran up around that, that area. So oh, haven't that you? was one. Oh. But, uh, but, yeah, I really um, – I'm I'm really looking forward to after UTMB and not looking too far ahead, but uh, really looking forward to getting out and, you know, getting out and doing some more extreme missions with some of the guys that I run with there. Um, You know, it's a great, great bunch of guys. And, and I know we've been on a few missions where there's been probably some type three fun, I'd say even worse than type two. Um, But I suppose once again, when you look back, some Piotr, what's his name? How do you say? That? Oh yeah, Piotr. Yeah, Piotr. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He so between Piotr, <laughs> yeah. So um, Piotr and Lincoln, and yeah. um, and then there's another guy called Matt Pierce, and another and Drew Beswick as well. Sort of guys that I sort of have got this little group, and then yeah. there's certainly there's certainly some stuff that we're sort of planning to go and do, and and we That's just right. probably once a year or so, um, and it's usually around my birthday in the end of November, usually uh-huh. around that time. We over the last few years have done some <clears throat> some more sort of wilderness based missions. You wouldn't say, yeah, that's running, but there's certain areas where you just can't even run because the you know the uh, the Tasmanian wilderness in certain areas is pretty thick and Maybe pretty like hiking or something. Like I've done yeah. plenty of hiking in Tassie, um, and I often think oh, it'd be really nice to go through here really like faster and you know with some, yeah, not yeah. carrying a big heavy pack and maybe do it in a day instead of 
four or five days, you know, four that or five, sort of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Absolutely. So I think, yeah, that's really exciting. And the things that you see out there, they're just so, um, yeah, like you were trying to describe before when you're out on the trails and, and you take in the vistas and when you're out, on, you know, out on um, Mount Kenyani, it's just incredible and people yes, don't. Yeah. And whether you do the same run every day or not, it what you see is different. So even though that's, I, that's what I love about trails as well is that you can irrelevant of you know if you even if you do the same trail every day, it'll be yeah. different every day because of the weather and the the way nature changes and and all that kind of stuff. It's just um, incredible and so good for your soul. Um, what would you say is your favorite run? Do you have like favorite? Or type of run, if you don't want to p- pick a particular. Is, is this uh, more in a a? You can. Is this in a race sense, or is this in a, or just to the you? End? You can answer it any way you like. Um, Doesn't matter. Well, I've done I've done Cradle Mountain Run for the last three years, and that's actually a really nice run down along, yeah. down the Overland Track. Yeah. Um, and that's that's kind of it's a smaller event. It's really great. What Lincoln's done with Kunani Mountain Run, although I haven't run it, um, you know, that event is certainly coming along in leaps and bounds. And, you know, as Lincoln and I live very close together, like, you know, within, a, you know, a couple of hundred metres of each other. Oh, wow. So <laughs> I remember back before when it was even just the concept stage of the Kunani Mountain Run, you know, got some really great memories of going and doing the course recce. So we oh, would go wow. and run the certain, the back sections to see what they were like. And this is through the COVID lockdowns as well, uh, from memory. I think there was a couple of, yeah, in the COVID yeah. sort of time. So there was all this uncertainty and, you know, and I'll look back fondly on those of doing some early morning morning missions with Lincoln. Um, but I think anything where I'm out there, you know, with like-minded people sometimes, yeah. and it maybe not one in particular might be, might be a tough one. I mean, with UTMB coming up, I haven't experienced it yet, but that's certainly a huge bucket list for me, bucket list race. Mm. So I'm really, really looking forward to the challenge because I've never done a miler before. So, um, and that's obviously going to be a tough miler to start with. So, uh, but once again, really, really looking forward to, I guess, the opportunity to get there and just to be around that vibe at the start line and everything else. But um, I guess, you know, yeah, UTMB is maybe whether you say it's that, you know, that, that iconic thing, but there's something that, can certainly be said about getting out into the wilderness with your mates as well down here in Hobart yeah, or around just, Tassie. Just loving it. How long do you think you'll run for in your life? Oh, that's a good question. I, I'd i like to think that it's going to be a while yet. Mm-hmm. There might be something that might I would still like to get back to surfing a little bit. I think there's certainly a lot of um, making up for lost time in a sense. Uh, when it comes to surfing, but I'd like to think that it's something that's uh, I never want to lose that sort of child life quality of of wanting to adventure and to be curious and to um, and there is just so much more. Although I've been fortunate enough to go and see a lot, of, well, a fair bit of what Tasmania has to offer around, especially some of the Molding Day bushwalks and other things. There's still so, so much down here and around the world. So, you know, I'm already thinking a little bit past UTMB, where I might go to next to do a, a run. You know, do I want to go back to New Zealand? There's a couple there that I wouldn't mind doing. There's one in New Caledonia. There's more in Europe, although Europe's a long way to go and a pretty expensive yeah. place to go for yeah. a trail run. Um, but the passion's still alive. And I think, although I'm not getting younger, um, I'd like to think I'm probably – not far off being I'm, I'm i'm pretty fit at the moment you know for an old bloke so it's yeah it's something um and i think what will keep me there is definitely the community aspects of it yeah. uh because i think we touched on it before i'm so inspired by some of the people that are around me and the people that i've met that i'm i'm fortunate enough to feel call you know really good friends now mm-hmm. and through my journey with trail running and everything else, that's probably the thing outside of going out into the wilderness and exploring and things. I think the connections that I've and friendships that I've made with other people is the thing that, you know, I know will be there for many years. And I've made a lot of people, a lot of friends that I know are going to be lifelong friends mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to the guys that I go adventuring with, when it comes to the people I connect with multiple times a week through some of the social runs, you know, it's just, um, I think that's definitely the thing that's going to, uh, 
continue to keep me in this mm. community. Yeah, a lot of people say, you know, they started running for whatever purpose they start running, but why they stay running is because of the people that they meet and the community that, yeah. that they surround themselves with as a result. Um, for you, is it important how fast you run or is it more the adventure or, yeah, how does that sit with you? <clears throat> no, not oh. – I don't want it to become like a job. Uh, or, or sometimes I'll have sort of maybe a time in my head, if, especially if it's something that I've ran before, then maybe I might have a goal time. But I do try and I do try and be kind to myself as well uh, when it comes to those kind of things. And I don't want it to be, you know, I'm loosely competitive when it comes to trail running, but mm-hmm. it's not for sheep stations. It's about being out there and challenging yourself, you know, and I certainly try not to compete necessarily with others. It's about being out there and challenging yourself. And I think trail running, what it for me it exemplifies is I think when you're out there and you're exploring, when you're out there and you're running, I think you're being a good version of yourself. And and that is regardless of any distance that you might cover. So if you're going to go out there and you are going to do a five kilometre trail run or a five kilometre road run, whatever it is, I think you're out there being a good version of yourselves. And and a couple of things I try and adopt. So one of my things is I take a photo every run and that's something I challenge myself to do. Yeah. So um, like I don't post much on social media at all Mm -hmm. really, but if you looked on my Strava, you would nearly 99% of the time you'll see a photo. And the reason is it's about me trying to be present and seeing the beauty in at least something when I'm out running every time. So I could have run that trail a thousand times, but I will look for something, whether it's a flower in bloom in spring. Like you were saying, I think that you can run the same trails, but, you know, you want to be present. You want to be aware of your surroundings. You want to, you know, wow, oh, look, there's flowers in bloom or wow, the autumn leaves, or, you know, there's so much to just look, look at whilst we're out in these beautiful places. And, I know that I'm trying to be a champion for Tasmania here, but we are very, very fortunate, whether it's on Kunati, whether it's in the Cradle Valley, whether it's over on the West Coast, whether it's down on the Southwest Coast, the East Coast, you know, or around the trails that are just behind my my house. There is just so much beauty in the world. And so that's one of my things when I'm out running is taking a photo um, every run um, because and I forget why I started doing that. Races. Uh, yeah, I'll usually at least, yeah, I'll usually take, yep, there's, there'll awesome. always be at least one photo. Yep. That's awesome. I love it. Um, I need to, I think I might adopt that. I used to do that a lot and now I still do it sometimes, but not all the time. I should do that mm. more though. I, I really do. Um, before we started recording, we were talking a little bit about mindfulness. And as you just yep. said then, you know, that's one of the ways that you helps you to stay present at least some of the time while you're running and or racing. You also mentioned that you do some meditation as well when you're not running as opposed to running and meditating at the same time. <laughs> so um, yeah. tell me, what, what does that look like for you and why do you do that? And does it help you running? Uh, yeah, I think uh, so this year I challenged myself uh, this year. I know that New Year's resolutions are usually, what, what are they, 80% are done by February. So this year... I challenged myself um, towards the end of last year. I'd been on and off with meditation for the last few years, and it's something that over the last, oh, probably about the same time I've been running, probably that last sort of eight or so plus years, mm-hmm. uh, I've sort of been meditating on and off. Uh, but this year I really wanted to try and cultivate it like a habit, like running for me. So. Um, I challenge myself to do 10 mindful minutes a day of meditation and, but I'm being kind to myself as well in trying to, uh, whether you call, whether you say like maybe a micro habit. So, but I'm very kind to myself as long as I sit down and I meditate, even if I meditated for two minutes, five, well, I probably haven't done a two minute meditation, but if if I felt that (laughs) I only could do minute one. (laughs) Yeah, so so if if there was only time to potentially do three minutes or whatnot, um, then I'm challenging myself to meditate every day. And so far this year, every day, haven't missed oh, a day. Yeah, that's and then amazing. Once once you build the streak, like at the moment, like 
I wouldn't miss a day because you break, don't want to break it? the streak. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on a streak I'm now. I'm on a running what... streak as well. I know what that feels like. I oh, are you? Yeah. yeah. So How many days? Uh, well, I actually left my, because as I told you, I'm in Queensland at the moment. I've left my thing at home. I'm at, when I left home, I was at um, like 200 and something days. So wow. by like, I think it's October, I'll be a year or sometime in October. Yeah. So there you go. You I'm running at least two yes. kilometres a day. So. You know what's going to be really interesting is it's whether you're going to be able to have a day off after a year or whether no, you're going to probably put not. No, because my personality yeah. won't let me. It'll make me. Keep yeah, that's doing right. Because I was only going to do it to Christmas time. And look at me. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I got it to Christmas oh, time. Okay. I was like, oh, well, there goes 90 days or whatever it was. Yeah. And um, here I am still doing it. No, so I, think, I think with the meditation, it's not trying to put pressure on myself too much. But I know. Yeah, that's why for me, I two Ks it, isn't. Like and now I'm training for you know to do gone nuts next year, so it's not like I'm only doing oh, awesome. 2Ks, but um, yeah, yeah, oh, that's a great run. Two, 2Ks is easy to do on those days when I don't have to go for a run when it's a but I think run. you look at the I think about like to remember about myself, the if I think about Gareth in the next five years, and hmm. I think the Gareth that meditates here, there, and everywhere versus someone that can develop a habit where let's say I don't do it every day, but let's say I do it like 90% of the time. Yeah. I know that those two people in five years will be, whether they're going to be hugely different, that's subjective, but, but I know that it's, it is just such like, I know um, when I have meditated and then stopped meditating um, over the, over the years. Yeah you really can notice a difference. And, and I think um, it's Obviously just positive. such. What's, what is the, oh, absolutely. if you had to pull in words, what's it giving you? Uh, I think it gives you the, that ability to step in between stimulus and response. And I think, mm-hmm. um, oh, it's in trying to be present. Look, I, I'm going to be the, first one to say that, you know, are we all somewhat addicted to these devices that we have in our pockets? And, and yes, and can that, is that something that I could improve on? And absolutely. But I think, I think definitely even in races, I think that my mental strength uh, in being able to navigate through the tough times is, has definitely improved through consistently meditating. Wow. Um, and, and look, I have, Nothing to back that up except for lived experience. Um, but I suppose my lived experience and my perception being my reality mm. is that that I feel, um, and I guess being empathetic to yourself, being equanimous, I guess that's probably the word, you know, trying not to react too much either way to either the positive or the negatives and being a bit more equanimous in everyday life um, and just learning um, to try and be present where you can. Um, mm. Certainly. You know, and I'm certainly no guru when it comes to meditation, but um, it's something that I do hope that, you know, alongside of running, it's something that it's it's one of the habits I think that um, is something that I hope hopefully can continue for, for I, a long time consistently. I mean, I love that. I mean, I love running for the reason that it's so egalitarian and anyone can just yeah. grab a pair of shoes and head out the door pretty much anywhere. Um in the same meditation is the same or, or just being mindful or however you want to do it. The problem is that in our Western world, we've attached so much other stuff to meditation that a lot of people have their own preconceived ideas about what that could look like in their lives. And that doesn't fit with what they think they already are. Whereas the reality is um, it's actually accessible to everyone and it doesn't need to be any sort of, you know, woo woo thing or a spiritual thing or or anything. It's it's what no. you make it. It's an internal sort of um, thing that can can and is very valuable and scientifically been proven to be very valuable. Oh yeah, I, I, it's ab- absolutely mm-hmm. yeah. It's very very valuable. I think for um, <clears throat> you know, I think for a lot of a lot of things in life, and like you say, it's scientifically proven. I think what is it? Mm-hmm. I think it's. Um, in around 12 weeks of consistent meditation can actually, if like if you've got a scan of your brain, I think it actually will actually, you know, start to change, um, change what actually comes up on the scan. So it's, it's certainly, it's something in my young years, I would have said, what? Sitting down with nothing but your thoughts? I'm like, yeah. what? Um, but yeah, maybe I'm a little bit older and wiser now perhaps than what I was. 
I think it's that getting bored. You're quite a bit younger than me, but and so we didn't have a lot of television for <laughs> kids, and we didn't. Have, we certainly never. Oh yes, yeah. But um, um, a little I mean, my kids have grown up with phones and the internet and and all of that sort of stuff. And as you said before, there's not a lot of downtime in our. Yeah. And they don't know how to be bored, and that's which is probably a, you know part of of um, meditation and and being mindful is actually being able to be with your own thoughts. Definitely, yeah. And I think running, we were touched on that before we started recording, but running is a path to that. To yeah, I agree. Yeah. With your own thoughts because yep. it, often we don't always run with something in our ears. That's a good question. Do yep. you run with stuff in your ears very often or are you mostly uh, running with people anyway by the sound of it? Yes and no. Oh, no, I do actually do quite a lot of running by myself. I'd yep. probably be at least 50-50 okay. as far as, you know, with others. Yep. Um, but yesterday, I did a long run yesterday, so I was out there for quite a while mm-hmm. yesterday, and um, there was nothing for probably the first two-thirds. And then the last third, I actually was listening to um, – I, I do listen to music occasionally, mm-hmm. uh, to, but – quite a few podcasts sometimes. Yeah. So I, I actually really enjoy digesting podcasts while I'm yeah. out running. Um, and I'll usually only have one earbud in though. So yeah. um, so I do like to actually have a sense of awareness yeah. around me, not just be completely shut off. Music's different. If I'm listening to music, I'll have both buds in. But I do um, when I'm listening to audio and stuff. Um, when it comes to podcasts. conductive ones. So they sit up here. Oh, yeah. So, yep. yeah. I used to only listen with one always until I got these at Christmas time. And they're really good because oh, okay. your ear is out and so you can hear things. Oh, are they um, the aftershocks? Are they? Yeah, exactly. They're called aftershocks. Yeah, okay. Um, well, there's yep. other brands as well, but they sit on your, the bone and so your ear can still pick up other noises around you, whether it's birds or cars. <laughs> yeah, wonders of modern technology. Yeah, it's, yeah, um, it's, it's actually really cool. Um, but I think uh, when it comes to, oh, sorry to um, interrupt, when it comes yeah, to right. the meditative qualities of running, I think we spoke about it just before. We started that yeah. I'm conscious that it doesn't act like a mask because I, yes. I suppose everyone's fighting a battle that that others may not be aware of, you know, as, as the old saying goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm conscious that I think meditation itself is certainly a little bit different than running, um, but I try and use them as complementary things mm-hmm. um, because I don't want running to be potentially a mask, you know, and sometimes I think we all know someone that, you know, goes to the gym seven days a week and, you know, if they didn't go to the gym for one day, they'd probably have a mental breakdown type of thing. So yeah. I'm very conscious that, um, yeah, I try and create a bit of uh, balance to make sure that running isn't the only form of sort of mental wellness that I try and do for myself. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, it's There are a lot of people who think about, mindfulness and meditation and can't necessarily work out how that is connected to a physical endeavor like running until they start running pretty regularly and then occasionally again we touched on it before we started recording occasionally you can get into a kind of meditative um, especially certainly being very mindful of where you are and your environment and your body as well um, while you're running and as, again, I've talked about on the podcast plenty of times, but they have studied it now and they've shown that what's going on in your brain is exactly the same as yep. whether you're sitting down meditating um, or not in those circumstances. Yes. Uh, yep. I guess it's when you reach a flow or, or flow state or whatever. What Definitely. I would love is that more runners were able to tap into that when they wanted to consciously rather than just tapping like it just happening because oh it was a great run today because everything worked or whatever instead it's like I've had a crap week or you know things aren't going well in my life I need some um a bit of mental health moments or whatever they can go for a run and it doesn't just become an added stress that run because they're training for something or whatever um but they can tap into that right there and then it can be a bit of like as i said to you before my mum's an art therapist can be their own self therapy to a degree i think one of the paths to that though just as an adjunct to what you said before is that if you are already practicing mindfulness and meditation in some way whether it's a daily streak like yours then you're more likely to be able to use your running deliberately on purpose when yes. you need it for that yeah and that's well. actually that's actually a really i think that's a really good way to put it that um yeah that's a yeah i hadn't i haven't heard that 
phrase like that before. That's actually um, I'm mm. gonna I'm gonna just um, bookmark that. That's uh, that's really good. Way to think about it. yeah. <laughs> it's all about the practice. Whether we're practicing running for the physical yeah. endeavor of running, and our body gets yep. used to all our muscles and ligaments and everything get used to it and we don't get injured and da, 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 and running becomes easier because you're doing it consistently and you're practicing. It's the same with when we're practicing meditation, except that it's not just in those moments that we're being meditative or mindful. Those actually flow into the other things we're doing in our life. So it, being a mum of lots of kids, I've spent lots of time in the supermarket and I've spoken on this podcast a number of times about standing in the shopping <laughs> <laughs> shopping queue, <laughs> waiting for things to go through and using that as a moment that I, rather than getting my phone out of my pocket, as you mentioned before with our devices, it's very easy and very addictive to get the phone out, check yes. my emails, do my whatevers. Um, but instead uh, I will consciously start looking around me and taking in the environment that I'm in or just being present in that moment and not, you know, if you're practicing mindfulness and meditation, more often than I think it flows through all of your life, whether it's running oh, definitely. or standing in a supermarket yeah. queue. And you can access yeah. it then more more easily because of that practice, not because you're ever going to re- reach a destination of being super good at any of these things mm. because it's just no, I think I think both. I think both running and meditation, uh, you know, go hand in hand in, in making certain things about everyday life maybe a little bit easier mm. and... So, and it's certainly what I mean. Let's be honest. When when I talk to people that don't run, that are around me, like at work or or in you know family and other things, and they they ask me about like you mentioned about motivations to do it, you know, and I maybe sometimes label it to certain people as my midlife crisis, and yeah. and maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But let's be honest, it's it's there's certainly worse things I could have done when it comes to being a midlife mm-hmm. crisis. I think absolutely, uh, and I. And isn't it amazing that you hear of so many stories as to how people, you know, found trail running, and that, and that's one of the the things I love hearing is is people's stories, not too dissimilar from me watching the YouTube video to get me into trail running potentially. But I love hearing, you know, in people in the community, and I love when people reach out to me as someone that hosts social runs. Now I get quite a lot of messages from people in the community. Yeah. And they'll message me before they come to their first one because they're really apprehensive about, yeah, oh, do I need to come along to this social trail run? Do I need to be a gun runner type thing to come along? We're like, no, 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 you can come like walk, you can come and walk. People bring their dogs, people bring their kids. You know, uh, there's, you know, we something when it comes to, I guess, what I'd like to see in the future of trail running, definitely down here in Hobart and then maybe around the country is just that overarching thing of inclusivity you know we want to you know check your egos at the door whilst we want to really celebrate some of the amazing things that people do some of these amazing runners that are you know like whether it's Killian doing sub 20 at at, uh, UTMB last year or whether it's Courtney breaking Western States record by 50 minutes or whatever yeah You went, you you muted a bit. Hold on, slow on. Where are you there? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm there. Yeah, there sorry. Phew, we lost <clears> you for a sec. Just had a, just had a call flash up. But I was I, like, but you I were getting all it's excited, done. so I thought. <laughs> it's, it's about um, looking to the future in that community side of things and making sure that yeah. people feel that they, they're they included in, in trail running. It's not about how fast you run. It's about getting out, um, making friends. It's about you know, connecting with others, connecting with nature, you know, which brings so many benefits, um, like we were talking about when it comes to mental health, when it comes to uh, things. And when I look back through, say, say for instance, down here, the Hobart Trail Runners Wednesday night, which I sort of now host, is the thing that's most rewarding for me is when I look back over the last three and a half years of someone who's been there pretty much probably for 95 last or nearly most of the weeks I'm, I'm always there is seeing how many friendships have formed and not just for me but for others within the community and when I see you know on social media that that people that I know met on these these runs these little social runs and now still three and a half four years later going out to dinner or going away interstate on holidays whether it's people that have got together as couples through these social runs 
you know, I look back and I just go, wow, how how amazing is this that we just, you know, that through a little social run once a week, you know, you can just, um, and, and when I look at my story through this, you know, all of the amazing friendships I now have as a result of um, connecting with different people on the Wednesday nights and other things. And, um, you know, it's just, yeah, what an amazing community we have here. That's sorry, in, tra- in the trial running community. I love it. I really do. I think it's awesome. Um, what do you think your life would be missing had you not started to run, Gareth? Which seems like a silly question after all the, that you just said. <laughs> Yeah, that, that would be the thing that's lacking. I mean, I'm very fortunate that I've got a lot of good friends. Um, yeah, you've got your surfing community too. Because I've got my surf, yeah, yeah. Well, they're all very, They, I imagine, I grew up on King Island, so I grew up around the ocean and very yep. outdoorsy as well um, and a bit surfing there. Um, so so I imagine they're very similar type of people in the, their motivations for things are very like the outdoors, I want to get out and experience, have another yeah, adventure, that yeah, kind definitely. of stuff. So similar types of people what i'd be missing uh I, I think you summed it up i think it's not to say that i didn't have a really great and i still am, am lucky enough to have those all of those my long-term friends that we've grown up surfing together mm-hmm. but i think that's probably when i look back you know and that's probably a moment in time uh in some senses one that i'll mention you know i'd certainly like to revisit and start connecting more probably this summer post UTMB and getting back into the water a little bit more this yeah. summer in amongst obviously still running as well and being active in the trail running community. But there would be a lot missing. And, and I think I'll be forever grateful for that sliding door moment that mm-hmm. brought me to trail running because, and if we look back that eight to 10 years when I think about what trail running probably was back then, especially probably in Australia and, you know, especially probably in Tasmania, and then I see where it's, it's, it is now, I think it's just such a, a really exciting time uh, for trail running in general. I think I'm not sure I don't have all the stats, but I know trail running is one of the sports that is certainly growing in leaps and bounds across the world. Mm-hmm. And I certainly imagine it's growing a lot in Australia uh, and People are really starting to embrace this. You know, did COVID accelerate that? I'm not sure, but mm. I know down here in Tassie, you know, I, you know, when you couldn't go and do some of the things you used to do um, and you were allowed to go for, you know, get out into the wilderness, even down on my dog walking trail where I walked with my dog yeah. every single day, when people couldn't go and do all this other stuff, the dog, the, the tra- traffic along this track was never busier than when people could only go out for half an hour of exercise a day and they had to do it within 5Ks of their house. And so, um, look, if, if COVID was one of the things that contributed to the growth of people, and how cool is that in amongst a completely crappy time being right. COVID and all of, the, all of the hardships we all went to, I'm sure there's quite a few stories out there in the community of people that found trail running in amongst COVID lockdowns. Mm. And... You know, that that's a story. But, yeah, one of those sliding door moments, really, really grateful that I do have that because there certainly would be, now knowing what I know, I'd certainly be missing, you know, a a huge part of what I would say now is is my everyday life. And that's, you know, getting out and about, connecting with people every week, um, you know, getting out on the trails, talking to my friends about how their week's been. You know, it's something I look forward to every single week is just getting out and saying hi to people that I know um, through this passion that we sort of have all developed. Yeah, I love it. I just wish more people did it. <laughs> oh, I think uh, I think, uh, I think, think it's going to keep growing. Yeah, well, I, I, for me, well, it makes no sense that people don't. Like to me, you should, yeah, it should be like that. It should have started. Like, yeah, you, we all ran as kids, even if it was just to catch the ball or whatever while we're playing, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know why people stop really. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of what's funny, isn't it? Once you, you become a bit myopic about it all, but it, it is such a, a base, simple thing. Our bodies are made to do it. That's as simple as that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. If we didn't run, we either were food or we didn't catch any food. Uh, we didn't survive. So all our yeah. ancestors <laughs> were runners because <laughs> they survived. Absolutely. Yeah, they <laughs> certainly weird. were, weren't they? That's how it works. Um, is there anything about running that we have not touched on that you would like to touch on, Gareth? Oh, um, 
oh, what's coming up? Oh, there'll be a new little trail running club that I'm starting down here in Hobart. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of just sort of coming out now um, called Trail Nation. So that will, it's sort of very, very softly uh, launching over the next little while. And what that's going to be about is that, that is actually. I've like seen that somewhere. Why? Maybe on that Facebook. is actually going to be, um, it's going to be about trail running mm-hmm. and it's going to sort of coexist, I guess, alongside sort of Hobart Trail Runners. It's not meant to be a competing platform. It's mm-hmm. going to be community ran, community led, uh, and it's going to, um, what I'm excited about is it's not going to be just all about running. So it's going to be about running, um, but it's going to be about, cultivating community connection in, in its, I guess, in it, I guess maybe a mission statement could be something along those lines, but it's going to focus on other areas of wellness. Um, like we've sort of been t- sort of loosely chatting about today, as far as mindfulness and about uh, meditation I w- and certain things that I want to try and focus on in my life. Mm-hmm. And so I want to try and bring some others along for the ride. If that makes that's, sense. That's why I have a podcast about running and mindfulness. For yeah, my own, so like that, to help me, <laughs> my process. Yeah, yeah. So I would like to intertwine a little bit more. Um, something I've been wanting to to do for a while is to potentially intertwine things like yoga and Pilates and other things like that, that yeah. into my weekly routine yeah. to complement all the other stuff I do. And so, as part of Trail Nation, we'll be certainly branching out when it comes to those kind of things. Um, we're going to be trying to do some bit more. Uh, we want to. I want to get people out of the comfort zone as well. Yeah. So we're going to be offering potentially. Um, we'll offer some training runs to try and support some of the local trail runs down mm-hmm. here in lead up to them. Uh, mm-hmm. To try and get people to, you know, challenge themselves. I think, you know, one thing I really enjoy about running ultra marathons and things is I think you learn a lot about yourself when you do. Yeah, and it's. It's kind of hard to explain and potentially articulate, um, but I think life's too short not to challenge yourself. And so whilst I don't want to make these things to be seen too unattainable with certain people, mm-hmm. and not everybody wants to run ultra marathons, so I'm certainly mm-hmm. conscious of that, but um, what I want to do is just try and encourage people to be the best versions of themselves. And, mm-hmm. and I associate a better version of myself when I'm active, when I'm running, mm-hmm when I'm learning from others, and that's what I really want to hope with, say, Trail Nation as well, is that because it will be community-ran community, uh, community ran and community-led, and so I'm in, in discussions now at the moment with mm-hmm. people, you know, um, I want to learn from others. I want, uh, you know, because that that's something that's, you know, who doesn't like learning? I want to be a lifelong learner as well as maybe a lifelong runner, but we'll have to see how that all, all goes. But that's probably something that I've got... Uh, got going on at the moment pretty exciting time in Hobart really awesome. um, I love that that's amazing H- how will people be able to find out about it? have you got anything they can have a look at now have you got anything oh, on yeah, Facebook the, or anything the Instagram and Facebook is literally oh. just launched probably in the last week there's only a couple of things on there at the moment but mm-hmm. um, yeah got some got some stuff that I'm pretty excited about so i'm hoping that others will be somewhat excited about as well uh, but like i say it's not going to be just me there's there's some individuals that um are sort of helping me along as to and so i'm yeah, pretty excited with what's going to come up and hopefully we can take the the social side and all of the friendships and connections that i've formed over the last you know you know, the last lot of years and, and just sort of amplify that. Um, and I also want to celebrate other things in, within the community. So, mm-hmm. you know, we want to celebrate the other run groups. We want to celebrate all of the, the great things that people are doing within the community, um, such as, say, for instance, Ben Hurst uh, for Run for Mental Health starts his double Everest challenge on this Wednesday. Yeah. So we had a chat with him last week at the social run on the Wednesday night, and that's mm-hmm. to shine a light on what others are doing within the community, you know, when, whether it's to, like I say, about the upcoming events, you know, there's a really good calendar of events between the Kinani uh, Trail Series down here. So we've got the Tolosa Half and uh, Marathon coming up, which is their most popular event on the calendar year. That's coming up in about a month's time. And they do, I think, four events through the year. We've got Cradle Mountain Run. We've got Gone Nuts. We've got Kinani Mountain Run. We've got um, Narantapu. 
you know, there's, and, and that's just to name a few, there's the other trail runs around the Freysnape Peninsula yep. and all of those <laughs> things. And so what Trail Nation will be is, will be hopefully a platform that celebrates all of that yeah. in, in a succinct thing where we, we want to celebrate um, what we have to offer um, and then also some of the professionals that operate in the space, so uh, whether it's physios, whether it's all of the other things. So we're working uh, in the background in, in amongst all my spare time training for UTMB and working. Uh, there's not too much spare time at the moment, but I'm certainly trying to focus on working on that a little bit um, through the weeks and other bits and pieces. It's all stuff that you're passionate about and, and is all interrelated anyway, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, we can um we can put some links up to your current socials if you like um, with Trail Nation in the show notes. That would be yeah, awesome. awesome. Yeah. We did speak to Ben Hurst actually only a few weeks ago on the podcast. Oh yeah. So oh, talking, what an amazing guy! Like that. yeah, he's awesome. He is just like he's someone that I really that really inspires me. There's there's quite a lot within the local community of of people that, like I say, I think I mentioned, I'm fortunate enough to call a lot of these people friends, but you've got like Ben Hurst. I mean, I admire, I admire that bloke. He is just, you know, such an amazing person on so many levels. And I mean, you know, if I was going to aspire to be more like certain people, he's the kind of bloke that I would really aspire to, you know, emulate. or his example that he sets and emulate. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's the guys like Piotr, who's just an amazing athlete. He's just mm. <clears throat> won Brisbane Trail Ultra 100 miler on the weekend, oh. breaking Matt, he, he broke Matt Crean's record by 50 mm. minutes. Um, mm. So he's, you know, he's someone that, you know, loved going, getting out in the wilderness with Piotta and we have a bit of banter between us, um, you know, and, and, you know, he's such a, such a great, great human being. You know, you've had Lincoln on the, Lincoln, uh-huh. Lincoln Quilliam, you know, one of my neighbours, you know, uh-huh. such a good mate. You know, how inspiring is he that, you know, with all the events that he's created for the community between the Kunani Mountain Run, Kunani Trail Series, you know, and then there's also some of the other people that I run with, you know, these overachievers, you know, one of the guy I run with, he's a doctor, he's, he, he's a, you know, he's a very accomplished musician. You know, I run with parents that make parenting look so easy. I'm just like, oh, my goodness, I can hardly balance life with a dog, and yet <laughs> you just make balancing parenting two kids under you know four and two they just make it look effortless and then you know and then of course you've had Jess Collins on as well and Jess Collins you know um you know just an amazing person that is just so disciplined and and I certainly look to Jess and her consistency and dedication is something that Mm. uh, is very inspiring as well. I, I would hazard to say that each one of those people would say that it's it's not that they have to squeeze the running in, it's because they do the running that they can squeeze all those other things in because it gives their yeah. life energy and yeah, that's how I've always thought of it as being a busy person yeah. in many other areas of my life apart from my running, that if it wasn't yes. for my running, I couldn't do those other things to the level that yeah. I've been able to do them. Absolutely. Yep. Makes sense. And it's amazing what we will, you know, when when I'd never want to hopefully have that excuse of I'm too busy to go and do this or that because I think we can we can make time to do um, certain things in life. It's just where, where your priorities lie. Yeah, I, I, I've often looked around and seen, you know, when you think, oh, I'm so busy at the moment, how am I going to do that? But if you really want to, you can. Yep. And then you look at people who run countries or, you know, massive organisations and you know how overscheduled they are especially those who do it right, will also be out there doing their run or their walk or making time for the gym, even if it just means they get up a little bit earlier or whatever, or yes. they go to sleep a bit. Like they just have to, like you prioritise, don't you? Like what's really important Absolutely. for you, yeah. mm, which is fair. Anyway, that's awesome. Let's get everybody fitter, happier and healthier across the globe um, together. We have to do it together, don't we? Because um it's not something that even you've mentioned community many, many times in this conversation, just how important that community element is. You know, it's why you keep, you know, it's not why you started running necessarily, but it's why you stayed running and now why you're Definitely. trying to do things that are going to lift the community again, like the oh, without the community yeah. or whatever. So. And I think, look, we, we've both talked about community and I know a lot of other people do. And, mm. you know, I, I think if it's if it's something that, keeps me in it um then i imagine as 
you mentioned it, it's something that's going to keep a lot of people in it. Mm. And uh, like I say, it's just, I think it's that's probably the most rewarding thing of uh, for myself is the, ama- the amazing friends I've created through this, mm. this past time that is trail running and, you know, to hopefully cultivate that and, and assist others in potentially forming these connections as well into the future is, is something that I certainly yeah, look, look forward to being a part of. Awesome. Oh, Gareth. Well, I've already kept you a lot longer than I should because uh, that's naughty. Anyway, but and you had lots of amazing things to, to talk about. Very inspiring. So I do appreciate you sharing your time. Before I let you go, though, can you give me some tips for beginner runners? So somebody who thinks they might like to start trail running, what would you suggest that they do? I would say... Uh, I'd say consistency would be the key. So I think you're better off. I think you're better off going out for smaller runs more consistently as opposed to going out and trying to run once a week for a long distance. Mm. Uh, and I think you you should just try and build up uh, that base. I think, once again, I think success leaves clues. And so I would be looking into a local trail running group um, if it's what if it's what you want to do or you want to just go and have a try find something like whether it is tra- um, Hobart trail runners whether it will be something like trail nation what, whatever it might be find like-minded people and learn from them you know go out um, because what you will is once you take that step I think that will naturally motivate you more than if you're trying to do it uh, by yourself mm. And yeah, consistency. I think yeah, which is what I've just said. But that would be my number one because I've seen a lot of people over the over the years where they'll go, they won't run for five days, and they'll go out and try and do two ten k runs, you know, over yeah. the weekend or something like, along those lines. Whereas I think they'd be much better off probably doing three or four, two or three k runs for a few weeks just to build up a little bit of base before yeah. they're going out there. But um, but also just getting out there and walking, you know, if you want to get out onto the trails, you know, you can just go for a bushwalk, you know, to mm. start with. You know, you can go out and run walk and things, you know, this. I think what people probably think before they come to a trail running thing is that there's going to be all of these expectations when in reality that's probably just in that's something that, mm. you know, I can totally understand. It's a bit of the unknown. But what I think everybody would say about the majority of trial running groups and and people that get together is that it's all about getting out there and you know connecting with nature you know connecting with other people um and just having a little bit of fun yeah um because it is such a great outlet uh, that can assist us all um you know with these hyper connected lives that we all lead so Mm. yeah i love it beautiful i think even um amy she was one of the first people on the podcast and she, Amy Lampret, and she mentioned oh, yes, that, yeah. that um, trail running is not really just running. Even the fastest runners no. in trail running walk and run. So it is fine Absolutely. <laughs> to walk and run, like sort of giving people permission to do that, um, yes. especially when they start. But the, the reality is we all walk and run. That's good. Mm. <laughs> all right. Gareth, thank you. You have been an inspiration and you've provided so much stuff for me to follow up on and get excited about. Um, I do appreciate the time that you've shared with us. So thanks for being here. Oh, thanks, Michelle. It's been lovely to chat. Don't run away because I'll talk to you off the podcast as well. Okay. Thank you for listening to the Fit Mind Fit Body Podcast. I'd love to talk to you about your running journey send me a message on Facebook or on the website and let's do it. I also wanted to let you know that I've created an email list so you won't miss any podcast episodes. You'll find details in the show notes and on the Fit Mind Fit Body website, along with a bunch of resources on mindful running. They'll help you to get and stay mentally and physically fit. And I'll see you there. Plus, I'll be back here in your podcast player a few times a week. Hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And before you go, I'd really appreciate it if you would leave a review. It'll help more people to find the podcast and get inspired to start running and ultimately to improve their life. See you soon.